I'm grovelled underground around Giver. I've carved out a cut at the crowns. You can tell your cousin Jack, I nearly broke me back in a rock fall at Wheel Towns. I blasted at Bullers and Balswidden, and at Francis where the roof caved in. If there's a hole down underground, that's where I'll be found with the lead, silver, copper or the tin. I carried me carouse to Cape Cornwall. I've laboured in the loads of love. I'm P. John Langford. The P is irrelevant, really. It stands for Peter, but nobody ever calls me Peter. So it's John John Langford, a.k.a. John the Fish, um, uh, a nickname that I acquired down here in Cornwall. I was born in Highgate. I was brought up in, in Edmonton or Palmer's Green, as my mother used to say. I lived there until I was in my mid-twenties, and then um, one year everything seemed to go sour. Uh, a friend of mine who I worked with, who um, we used to go to the jazz club together, and uh, he'd been down to Cornwall fishing a few years, summer seasons before. He said, let's go down to Cornwall fishing. I'd never been to Cornwall before. I didn't know anything about fishing. But it sounded a great idea, so um, that's what we did. We bought a boat and off we went mackerelin, working out in Newlyn. The things that we did wrong, it was just unbelievable. But I have to say, the local fishermen, the locals, they, they, they treated us so well. I mean, I'm so grateful to, to what they, uh, you know, when, when times were really bad, they really looked after us, which was, which was terrific, you know. I'm, I'm indebted to them forever. We used to go into Penzance to have a, have a, a meal, uh, we used to go into a little cafe that um, was run by Harry Graves and he eventually opened up the cellar and called it the graveyard. And uh, he, used to, he used to call out two meals for the fishermen and we used to get really looked after, you know, sort of. Um, uh, and uh, we, um, we became known as, as the fishermen and then it was John the fisherman and Ian the fisherman and slowly it got abbreviated to John the fish. Uh, and even just fish. I mean, Brenda used to call me fish. We were on tour once. We're coming back from um, uh, Norwich, a uh, little group of us, and we went into a, um, one of these Pizza Hut places. No, it wasn't Pizza Hut. Little chef. The waitress come up and said, what would you like? Brenda said, uh, what are you having, fish? And she said, I'm sorry, we don't have any fish. <laughs> More people know me by the name of John the Fish. Even today, now I go around meeting people under different circumstances and they suddenly say, do you used to be John the Fish? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Having a guitar and being able to sing opened all sorts of doors. You was always invited to all the parties and, and uh, it was a, a great thing. So I, I, any opportunity I would get the guitar out and, and, and sing. There was a couple came down and, and bought the count house and they wanted to run a cabaret um, event there during the summer. And they found, they couldn't find enough people that did cabaret. So they decided that they would cabaret and folk. And they approached Tell and I to go and sing there every night. Well, it's at that point that I had, really I had to make a dis decision as to whether I carried on singing at the, uh, or, or carried on fishing. And uh, you couldn't do the both, really. And uh, as it was um, um, unresolved um, ambition of mine to actually earn a living singing, I, I thought, well, right, here we go, pound a night. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it, it allowed me the rest of the day to do other things. So that, I mean, that was, that was fine, that was okay. And um, yeah, they asked us to sing every night out there. As the uh, season progressed, it started to get quite crowded. And um, it used to be packed practically every night. And uh, we did at one time run all night sessions down there on a Saturday through to uh, Sunday morning, yeah. Brenda Wharton came along, she, she was in the audience, she used to sing in the audience, she used to harmonise. And everyone used to, where's, where's that noise coming, that harmony, beautiful harmony coming, where, where was trying to locate where it was coming from and eventually it was Brenda and we lured her up onto the stage and then uh, she she started singing and then we worked together then for six years 
Uh, we travelled over, travelled all over the country. Uh, went over to France. We uh, were at the first L'Oreal Folk Festival. Um, that was good. Cornwall became a mecca for, for, for folk music, folk clubs, and uh, people. It was suddenly obvious that rather than go on tour all over the country, you could stay down here. The audience came on tour. They come, the holidaymakers come down, and and they would come out and they would say, "What a wonderful evening!" You suddenly realise that you're entertaining um, three generations, and they they all loved it. It's one of the very few things that three generations could come along and enjoy all together. Brenda was far more ambitious than I was and she really wanted to spread her wings and go into a different direction to what I wanted to do. I've, I suddenly realised that I was spending more and more time away from home uh, and I'd got married, uh, I'd got a dog <laughs> and uh, I, I just wanted to spend more time in Cornwall. I didn't really want to spend that time away from home so uh, I looked for other things to do. Radio Call decided they were going to put on a, a, an event um, down at Kanegi Country Club um, at the back of uh, Penzance. Um, and um, we had, by that time, I'd got a, a son, Merrick, who was uh, four months old. And we went down to the event. And when we got out of the car, uh, took the carry cot into the Kanegi Country Club and suddenly realised that he, 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 he was dead. And uh, ambulance was called, ambulance was there within minutes, and they tried to resuscitate him, but uh, no, he'd, he'd probably died in the car some while before we actually got there. And it was a cot death. And of course, that was life-changing experience. And um, my wife subsequently uh, still does work for the Foundation for the Study of Infant Deaths. You know, we went to the funeral director, the funeral director introduced us to the, to the, the local vicar who I knew anyway, um, uh, Mike Warner, and um, he came round and, uh, you know, we said we're not religious, and he said, well, you know, that's all right. But it was ostentatiously, it was a, it was a religious ceremony, and I, and, and I, th I, th I thought this is, you know, if you're not religious, there's something wrong here, and I certainly don't want a religious ceremony when I die. Um, and um, I joined the British Humanist Association because I'd heard that they did uh, funerals, non-religious funerals. And um, when Cornwall Humanist came about, um, I insisted that, you know, this must be one of the things that we do, and they said, right go ahead and do it. Yeah, I still get emails today. Uh, oh, I wonderful times at the count as I remember, you know, and, and I suppose if I've brought pleasure to people um, and also inspire them to do, you know, go on to, to, to sing and, and play, that is terrific. But I also, um, helping people through a funeral or helping people to celebrate their wedding day uh, or the naming of their child is, 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 is just, you know, I, I feel that I'm giving something back to society. If I can give something back to the community that I live in, that's, you know, that's wonderful. That's as much as I need.